Yo, what's up? This is Rockland. Today on Password Kings, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of moving to Atlanta. Engage. Kings.com. Welcome aboard, abroad. You know, I still say to this day that moving to Atlanta was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. So yo, there's a lot of reasons why you may want to leave your town because, I mean, things just sometimes don't work out the way they should be working out. You start to get a certain age and you realize it's about time for me to move on. And that's what happened to me. I moved to Atlanta. But you know, there was a lot of pros that came with it, but there was also some cons. And today on Passport Kings, I'm gonna go over those cons to help you make a better decision if you feel like leaving the city that you're in. First and foremost, it's the price of living. Yo, I'm originally from New York, and the way the prices of everything was just outrageous, there was no reason for me to even stay there. A lot of people like the bravado that comes with saying, hey, I'm from New York. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of things that are going on in New York, it really doesn't have anything to do with me. What I need is a nice place to stay, some income, and a place to eventually grow a family. New York has those things, but when it comes to like buying a home, in New York, chances are you're gonna be getting something that looks like a tenement building or a small apartment, and you're gonna be paying outrageous prices for them. Down here in Atlanta, you get so much more bang for your buck. Getting a nice house is just something that everyone does. Another pro is the weather. I don't know about everybody else, but I love beautiful weather. And although Atlanta does get kind of cold sometimes, like two months out of the, the whole year, the winter months, the majority of the time, it is beautiful out here. I really couldn't see myself ever again fighting through super cold weather, cold toes, cheeks freezing, and super big bubble coats just to be able to walk outside of my door. As long as this weather stays good out here in Atlanta, I'm staying here. Parking. Again, I'm from New York. Parking is one of the most frustrating things you can do in that entire city. Even just in the morning having to wake up, run downstairs, and move your car to the other side of the street. There are so many people in New York and everything is very close together. When I wake up in the morning in Atlanta, I look out the door, my car is right where I left it, and I'm causing no trouble to anyone. Now a big con about Atlanta is for the few days that it does snow, I don't think the city is prepared for any type of snow. Being from New York, I know that all it takes is like a couple of garbage trucks to drive down the street shooting salt all over the place. Yeah, it might look dirty, but it gets that snow off the ground immediately. In Atlanta, the whole city shuts down because of some snow. Sometimes it's even sprinkles and people start losing their minds. If you're a single dude, I highly suggest you move to Atlanta. Just walking in the supermarkets, you'll find some of the most beautiful women you've ever seen in the United States. And I know shows like Real Housewives of Atlanta, it really gave black women a bad name. Makes them seem like they're all crazy and fighting and looking for an argument any chance they can find one. But the majority of the girls out here, they don't even act like that. I mean, some of them do, don't get me wrong, but the majority of them, they don't. There's just a lot of people out here that are looking to meet each other, and they're not hard to find when you move to Atlanta. A lot of these chicks got their head on straight, and if you're the type of dude that just wanna settle down with somebody, I couldn't think of a better city to go to to find your soulmate. Just avoid the ratchet joints. Now let's address the real big pink elephant in the room. When you talk about Atlanta, the first thing a lot of black people think of is Atlanta's gay. And yes, there is a big gay community in Atlanta. The truth of the matter is they're not really thinking about you. And let's not even get started with the gay stuff I've seen on 14th Street in New York. I mean, let's be serious for a moment. There's not like this big attack squad of gay people that are running around making straight people become gay in Atlanta. If you don't wanna be bothered with gay people, just don't go to the places they go. They go to gay clubs and hang out at gay functions. If you aren't gay in the first place, you won't be becoming gay just because you moved here. And they go to Lenox Mall. I don't like any of the stores in Lenox Mall, so I'm not even there that often enough to see them. I don't have a problem with gay people, and it seems as if I leave them alone, they don't have a problem with me either. Now another thing which really isn't a problem in Metro Atlanta, but when you go out to the other counties that surround Atlanta, you're gonna run into Higville. And in a lot of those places, the police are just like a little too eager to find someone doing something wrong. 
From how I understand it, it seems like the county itself makes the majority of its money off of the criminal justice system. A lot of things that you would probably have is just bad habits when you come from your other city. The last thing you want to do is get caught doing one of those activities in one of those hick town America places. They're going to fine you. They're going to give you community service. You're going to be paying for probation for about a year. And they might even throw you in jail too. They're going to give it all to you. They see all the fines that you are about to incur as an excellent way for their county to make a lot of money. But with the invent of Uber and things like that, you shouldn't be drunk driving. And that's pretty much it. Stay out of the police way and a lot of times they stay out of your way. But being black, you know I can't guarantee that. A big pro is you can be a gun owner. If you're from New York like me, buying or even having a gun is like a big no-no. Out here, nobody cares if you have a gun or not. And the main reason for a gun is just to protect your home, protect your family. And I think it keeps a lot of peace. So a lot of times, people are just less likely to go trying something with you because they don't know what you got on you. A big pro is Atlanta is quiet. This fact took a lot of getting used to for me. I was used to the noise of the big city, but after that eerie feeling goes away, you'll realize how much more peaceful you feel when it's time to go to bed and the whole city is just quiet. Yo, a pro that you will never get tired of and will be amazed at is when you have like an appointment in a public services place. Going to places like DMV is heaven sent compared to go into the DMV in New York. Where I'm from, if you wanted to go to the DMV to do anything about your license, you better save an entire day for that process. You may as well pack a lunch. In Atlanta, you go to the DMV, you're out of there in 30 to 45 minutes, max. Doing something like a cookout in New York is a complete hassle. Just having a barbecue in the back of your home is something that at this point I just take for granted. It's nothing like being able to say, hey, today I might have a barbecue. You kindly go out in the back, throw some charcoal in your grill and start cooking. There's no big production like reading park signs to see if you're legally there or not, packing grills in the car, going to find a big park somewhere so you can just hang out and have a good time. Atlanta makes that possible for me. The only thing that really wants me to stop having so many cookouts is my weight. One of the cons is not having a lot of public transportation either. I mean, there is public transportation, but as far as things are away from each other and as short of a schedule, that a lot of these transportation services have, you're in way better condition if you have your own car. But the whole process of getting your first car or any car is not as much of a hassle as it was when I was in New York. I had a nice car when I was in New York, but the city made that car a hassle one after another, from parking to driving, stopping at a light every five seconds. But here in Atlanta, having a car is such a convenience that it's worth the money that you have to pay to get it and maintain it. Atlanta has a very big entrepreneurial spirit. I think the only way that it can be explained is if you are fresh from your city. In the city where I'm from, it was like the whole goal in life was to find a job somewhere, work there for 20 years, maybe 40, then retire, and then you're done. Then you hope that that 401k and the government saved up the money that they claimed they were saving for you all your life. In Atlanta, the rules and regulations are in favor of the entrepreneur. It is almost always encouraged that you find a way to make your own money. No one looks at you like you're crazy when you say, I'm going to start a business like they do in other cities. Starting a business is pretty easy too. All of the processes are very, very simple to find. The small business associations are practically begging you to start your own business. So I suggest when you're on your way down here, have it in mind what business you're gonna start and watch how simple it is for you to get it started. Another thing, yo, know, sometimes it just feels good to go into stores and see other black people all over the place. Cashiers, Service representatives, even all the customers buying the expensive items, are all black. In other places that I've visited and lived, you're almost an outcast going into a lot of the stores. Out here, you feel a sense of welcome when you walk in a store and you see people that look exactly like you. Atlanta is definitely a black city, and the comfort alone makes it worth living here. And yes, you will run into a lot of other races of people, but you never really get the tension that you get in other cities or even other counties in Georgia. Of course, one of the cons is the music, but what's cool is pretty recently, I found a radio station that plays nothing but 90s music. It's called Boom 105. 
finding a job is pretty darn simple, if that's what you want to do. Go to a temp agency, they don't give you a hard time about the interview process, work for them for a little while, and the next thing you know, they will be hiring you on full time. It's happened to me a couple of times when I first got here and I always found the process to be a lot more simple than all of the hoops you have to jump through in other cities just to find a job. To make it ultra easy, know somebody that already works at the job that you want to work at. They usually can get you right into the door with no problem. A real big pro, if you're a dude that loves to travel like I do, is Hartsville International Airport. From that airport, you could go pretty much anywhere in the world, non-stop. A lot of times, with the places that I love going, you probably will have to stop in Florida or Texas, but at least they're going in the right direction. I don't mind connecting flights, but I really do mind when I go into other directions to catch a connecting flight just to come back over this way. Hartsville International Airport is one of the biggest airports in the world. And if there's a place that you want to travel to, there's an option for you to get there from that airport. When you see people from Atlanta talk on TV, other than the Real Housewives episodes and things like that, a lot of times they have a really, really strong Atlanta accent. And it makes people look like they're just not that bright. But when you weed through those folks and you find the educated people in Atlanta, those are some of the most educated young black people that I've ever met in my life. They actually know what they're talking about, they know how to articulate themselves, and they're proud of being in Atlanta. Don't let media fool you and make you think that everything is a trap house in Atlanta. It's not. Some of the richest black people are in Atlanta, and some of the most innovative black people are in Atlanta. So do I think that you should move to Atlanta? I don't know, I guess it depends on you. And it depends on which city you're coming from. If you got your whole life set up in that city, being in a different place won't really make much of a difference. But if you're just tired of the same old, same old, and moving out of the country is not really an option for you, and you just really want to move and don't know where to, I highly suggest Atlanta. All right, so don't sit around your old block and act like you own the place. Unless, of course, you own a lot of real estate on that block. But if you don't, that is not your hood. There's no reason to be extra loyal to some concrete and some buildings that you just happen to have been born in when your mother gave birth to you. Don't claim things that's not yours. Claim things that you really own, like a king, a passport king. Peace! Great. Remember to leave comments below. Subscribe and like and share it with your social media. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to make money online or just book a trip, go to www.passportkings.com and pick up our free book while you're there. Any minute, a grown man is going to come out this bathroom, and I could probably guarantee he hadn't washed his hand. You heard the full toilet flush, right? Let's see how fast he comes out. Hmm, I think I hear. Nope, do I hear the, oh, no, nope. he ain't wash his hands. Oh, so what I tell you. Kings, we gonna go over <laughs> a few things that I didn't discuss the last time we was there. All right, wait, wait, look, look, look.